Agarose gels are useful for separating pieces of DNA by size. Gel electrophoresis takes advantage of DNA's negative charge and the fact that agarose creates a matrix when it is solid. When a current is applied, the DNA will pass through the agarose matrix from the negative to the positive lead. The smaller pieces of DNA will move through the matrix at a faster rate than the larger pieces, and all pieces of DNA that are the same length will travel at the same rate. This creates a band in the gel. Before running your gel, prep your DNA. An agarose gel is made from pure agarose, a white solid, and a buffer, usually tris borate EDTA, a clear liquid. To cast an agarose gel, measure out a mass of pure agarose and a corresponding volume of buffer. The ratio of agarose to buffer is calculated in advance. A higher percentage of agarose means a denser matrix. Gels are typically 1 or 2% agarose. Pour the buffer into a microwave-safe flask. Add the agarose to the buffer. Tap the bottom of the whey pan to make sure all the agarose gets into the flask. When it is added to the buffer, the agarose will not immediately dissolve, so it must be heated in a microwave for approximately one minute. While the agarose solution is heating, watch it to make sure it doesn't boil over. Be sure to take precautions while handling the hot glass. After heating, all of the agarose should be dissolved in the buffer. The solution should be clear. While the agarose is cooling, put together the casting apparatus, including the comb, which forms the wells. Different combs create different sized wells. The comb should be closest to the black electrode. When the flask is cool enough to touch, Carefully pour the agarose into the mold until the mold is about half full, or according to instructor's directions. Make sure there are no bubbles in the agarose. Let the agarose harden in the mold. This will take about 15 minutes. When the agarose has hardened, carefully remove the comb from the gel. Rinse the comb and pat dry. Remove the rest of the pieces from the mold as well, but keep the gel in its tray. Fill the gel box with running buffer to the fill line. You will easily be able to see the wells at the top of the gel. Add loading dye to your DNA samples. Loading dye is a small molecule. It weighs down the samples and allows you to track them as they move down the gel. Load your DNA one sample per well. Write down which samples go in which wells. Do not puncture the bottom of the wells with the tip of the pipette. Prepare your ladder and add it to one well. The ladder has a mix of DNA pieces of known lengths. It provides a standard of comparison for your DNA samples. A gel with samples properly loaded looks like this. Attach the leads red to red, black to black. Make sure the wells are opposite the red or positive lead as the samples will run to red. Plug the leads into the power source, red to red, black to black. Turn the power source on. Set the constant current or voltage. Press run. 
Watch the gel to make sure it's running properly. You will be able to see the gel front move towards the red lead. The blue line is the gel front formed by the loading die. Once the samples have run to the end of the gel, turn the power off and remove the leads from the power source. Take the cover off the gel box and set it aside. Remove the gel from the buffer, slide it off the tray, and place it in a boat of ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide is a carcinogen. Be very careful when handling it. After soaking the gel in ethidium, take the gel out and read it with the gel dock. 